so and th this will be our first link from the main negative up here all the way down to the B minus of the BMS. Yes. <laughs> now we are getting it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I've got the negative link here as well ready from our little bus bar here to the circuit breaker and from here from our little bus bar to the main negative. And now it comes to positive. So we need to get this one down here, goes down here and from here all the way up. Ah, I haven't got a ring lock here. To measure the length, damn it. Okay, so again, down here, along here. Yeah, the good thing, this one is not as critical lengthwise. And then go up here, have our ring terminal here, and can cut somewhere over a little bit longer. Ah oh, no, hang on, <laughs> this is, that is wrong. That is wrong. It's up here. Here it is. It's the end, a little bit longer. Two millimeters. There, there. That's where we cut it. Okay. And then hope for the best. And this is my new 35 millimeter crimp tool. Something happened to the hydraulic crimper. And this is entirely my own fault. I have put this here on my workbench. The dies were actually already together and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Leaned on it with my full weight and bang! The whole head snapped off. So don't do this. I know these ones are not the super, super high quality, but they are totally fine unless you lean or stand on them. It's not good. So the last crimp will be in the vise. This is my vise crimping. Looks exactly the same as the other ones. So hopefully it's all right. Well, the thermal camera will show us the result of this crimping. Far out. So I've now mounted both cables here to the circuit breaker and now we have to put everything together. Oh, that is very tight. Very tight. Mm, I just thought about it. I probably put some more heat shrink here over this area of the bus bar up until the terminal on both sides. That is a bit too exposed here. And this is our main positive and negative here. When you open the cover, you're looking at these two connections straight away. So that's not good. Yeah, that's much better. Well, we've covered these ones now here, but the bus bars here are still totally unprotected. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but a little cover would be nice, right? <laughs> I don't want to buy a 3D printer, really not. No, 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 no. I, I cannot find these mounting pads here to secure this cable here correctly in this area. Um, I don't know where I put them. Anyway, I'll do this later. So the next step would be to mount our bus bars here and then connect our balance cables to the terminal. Unfortunately, the terminals are not here yet. They are still on the way from China to, well, my location here. So, um, but I don't want to wait another three or four weeks until they come. I probably put these ones in here as a temporary measure without actually screwing them on the shelf. And we connect our balance leads and then connect the BMS on the other side just to get us started. So I'm a little bit torn apart at the moment on the fence and I don't know at which side I should jump. I probably put the fuses in. I've got them here and because I want to use this one millimeter cable here, it's an 18 gauge wire from here to the, so basically from here from the bus bar to the terminal then one millimeter wire and the fuse in between and then we can connect our 
BMS on the other side or a balancer or any kind of devices which you want to test with this battery bank. So this is where I go with the option of these terminals here. I don't want to undo these bus bars anymore on top of the batteries. They will be fitted once and that's it. And hopefully not at all anymore, ever. But I don't know, <laughs> this is just a plan. Because I ruined all the terminal threads in the old battery, in the first battery, because I took them off so often to mount balancers, different BMSs and the knee. And the aluminum of these terminals is so soft. They are definitely not being made to be taken off frequently. So yeah, hence the idea with the um, terminal row. I probably wouldn't bother with these very thin balance cables here, which came with the JK BMS. But because we've got a one millimeter cable now, there can be serious current actually flowing through these cables before they melt. Well, these ones here, they will just, I mean, this is the fuse, right? This is the fuse. This is such a thin cable. But one millimeter, that's a different number. I know the um, the fuses will potentially um, increase the resistance of the whole line for each balance cable. We can calibrate the balance cables in the JK BMS. We can set new values for each individual cable. It is a bit of an experiment with the fuses to see how this all works out. That's why I opted in for using the fuses this time, just to see how it works, if it works, what the problems will be, and how to overcome them. So it will be a bit of an experiment. As always here on the channel, we are doing things a bit different. I have totally forgotten to tap a hole here in the positive and main negative bus bar as well. So I had to cut off a little bit of the heat shrink here to drill and tap a hole here. So don't forget that you need access for your BMS to the main negative and main positive of the battery as well, not just in between. Now, well, it's the first time for me to connect the BMS, so can happen. It is a bit soft, these connections, because the wires of these glass fuses are so thin. So, so like this. And then I can connect this one here to our first contact here of the terminals. Okay, done. So in preparation of our terminals and the aluminium bus bars we will use, I'll take some no oxide A special lot 10130. And I just want to wipe them off, very, very small amount only, apply to the terminals. Apparently this removes oxidation layers, and I'll do the same on the bus bar here, where it has connection to the terminal on both ends. Okay, I hand tighten the set screws inside the terminal, so I push them all the way down. Only very gentle. Oh yeah, you can actually see where I have cleaned them. Look at this. It looks, yeah, there. It looks cleaner on this side than over here. So that's good. Um, all right, so first connection over there. I'll use some washers, even we are using flange nuts. I know this sounds a bit weird. But I don't like these set screws. They are making ugly marks on the bus bars. Okay, four Newton meters. And that's the other way around. There we go. Four Newton meters. That's it. Okay, um, well, second balance lead, and then I keep going and make my way through the whole battery. I guess I'll um, see you a bit later. 
it is already late. <laughs> I'll keep going. If this stuff here is correct or not, I don't know. If for Newton meters are correct or not, I don't know. Some people use Loctite on these set screws here and really glue them into the terminals. I don't know if this is correct. This is just the way I do it. There are a million different ways to connect these batteries correctly, incorrectly and everything in between. So you have to find your own way. There's no black and white, there's no correct and wrong. Or maybe there is, but some people don't use any antioxide paste in between and other people even polish their terminals. That's at least what I heard. I would never, I mean. Alright guys, it is um, after 10 p.m. already. I have half of the battery now with bus bars and balance leads done. And we need to do the jump now to the front row and continue over here. <sighs> I guess tomorrow. It is a lot of work. And I've got two more battery banks here to go. Alright, I would say you have wonderful sweet dreams and we will see us tomorrow when we continue wiring up this battery here and hopefully we can connect it tomorrow. Yes, we are ready to pull the trigger of the breaker. Actually push, yeah, push it up and then it's connected. Mm -hmm.